So I wasn't planning on making more She-Hulk content, but here we are. For some reason, Dan Slott decided to drudge up She-Hulk Attorney at Law despite the fact that the show ended months ago, claiming the show is the most comic accurate of the MCU, and claiming to be an authority on the matter since he wrote for She-Hulk. However, the showrunner stated that the show was never meant to be comic accurate, saying that going into the show, the producers didn't want to use her origin story with the mob hit because it didn't fit with the vibe they were going for, and they clearly thought that their vibe was more important than being comic accurate. But despite this being public knowledge, that's not going to stop a bunch of news articles coming out claiming Dan Slott is right. I'm not even sure why they keep insisting that the show is comic accurate when it's not. They openly admitted that they were doing their own thing, so just say it's another interpretation of the character. Just own it. I'd argue it not being comic accurate isn't even the main problem with this show. It relied really heavily on stereotypes, and it was actually uncomfortable, claiming that women live in a constant state of fear and anger. Most of the men she comes across in the show are creepy backstabbers, or just kind of stupid, with only a few exceptions to this. I don't even think this show treated Wong very well. And for some reason, they put Jen in competition with Bruce over whose life sucks more, which makes Jen look really shallow and dismissive of her cousin's trauma. I think they could have reworked her origin to not include the mob hit, but they could have done it in a way that didn't make her look derivative, which is something that they constantly said in the show, that she was just a derivative of her cousin, despite the fact that that was never the case in the comics. For example, in her her original origin, her injury is the result of things that are going on in her own life, since she was trying to prove the innocence of a framed man, which the mob obviously took issue with. The mob would have been after her whether Bruce was there or not, he just happened to be there. Whereas in the show, she got hurt because of stuff that was happening in Bruce's life, where an alien spaceship was trying to get his attention and forced her off the road. So instead of things going on in her own life that eventually led to her being She-Hulk, she just gets dragged into the Hulk's business and now has to deal with the fallout of that, instead of being able able to choose her own path the way she did in the comics. At first she felt she needed to control the She-Hulk, but she eventually grows to really enjoy it. She also had prolific careers as a lawyer and a superhero, being active members of teams like the Fantastic Four and the Avengers, and she was enthusiastic about it. Meanwhile here she openly mocks the Avengers and superheroes in general. She has a total lack of agency, which they spell out for us. She doesn't get to accept She-Hulk on her own terms, she doesn't get to decide who she is as She-Hulk, she doesn't even get to choose to be called She-Hulk. On top of that, she's a terrible lawyer, which is really disappointing because a lot of her cases in the comics were pretty enjoyable, but instead of bringing those over to the show, we get her making really silly mistakes, like not prepping witnesses before the trials actually start. The writers openly admitted they didn't know how to write courtroom drama, and it shows. They didn't seem to care to do any research or bother to consult with actual lawyers, but I guess it's all about the vibes despite the fact that her being a lawyer is a major part of the show. She goes on on and on about how all she wants to do is be a lawyer. It's what she went to school for, and now She-Hulk is interrupting her life. But then she's so bad at it. But you know, it's a lawyer who turns into a giant green woman. So that's basically the same thing. Never mind that her character is completely different, her backstory is completely different, and she doesn't even have agency in her own story, being dragged along by the plot instead of pushing it forward herself. Whenever they do bring in something from the comics, it feels more like they're just referencing it rather than adapting it. Like her breaking the fourth wall is something she did in the burn run, but they don't do anything fun or clever with it. She just turns to the camera and gives exposition. In this episode, Wong's going to show up. Isn't that exciting? They try to be self-aware about it, saying things like, don't forget whose show this actually is. Well, if it's her show, she's not exactly calling the shots. And then the finale, when they finally do something actually worthwhile with her fourth wall breaking abilities, she kind of ruins the MCU, at least my personal investment in it, where she can't Karen's her way into the management office, only to be told that the MCU is nothing more than an algorithm, doing its best to make as much money as possible. Forget things like artistic integrity or trying to tell a good story, the snap, the multiverse, the friends we made along the way, the friends we lost, all just emotional manipulation by a giant soulless corporate entity. Which I mean is cynically true, but it's still sad to see it openly admitted like that. Plus I think it takes away from the artistic integrity of the cast, crew, writers, and artists. Sure, the company is for profit, but that doesn't mean there was no artistic value in them. People claim that no one would have complained if it had been someone like Deadpool to do this instead of She-Hulk, but even if a male character did this, it wouldn't change the fact that the message is, nothing matters, it's all just a corporate algorithm to make money. Thanks, Disney. You know, the company that's overworking and underpaying their employees just to benefit their own bottom line. And then there's the rest of the show. In the comics, Intelligentsia is a formidable group of supervillains.
friends, including the likes of Doctor Doom. And here they're just a bunch of internet chuds, a forum to complain about Jen. I know they reiterated multiple times that the point of this show was to stick it to internet trolls, but they didn't actually need to use She-Hulk to do that. That could be like any show. Plus they tend to lump all criticism, even the valid stuff, as just being internet trolls. Again, we could have gotten Doctor Doom. Instead we get Todd. <laughs> But you know, there was an Intelligentsia in the comics, so it's totally comic accurate. Intelligentsia isn't the only aspect of the comics that ended up getting vibe checked for the show. Characters like Titania, Mr. Immortal, Leapfrog even, were all way more interesting in the comics than they were in the show, where they aren't really given much to do. Titania is basically just a petty nuisance, and she's totally lacking all the depth that she had in the comics. She suffered a lifetime of bullying, and now that she has superpowers, she's desperate to protect herself, and had a lot of interesting stuff storylines. Here I'm not even sure if she's meant to be Mary McFerrin or a different character who happens to be using the Titania name. Mr. Immortal went from a tragic figure desperate to escape the pain and torment he's constantly going through from being forced to watch his loved ones die while he lives forever but also tries to do as much good as he can to some wacky character who casually offs himself whenever he's mildly inconvenienced. Yeah that's deep. I guess this was the vibe they were going for. And then Leapfrog originally started out as a villain but he got arrested and put in jail so his son took up the mantle, but became a hero because he wanted to make up for his father's mistakes and not be like him, which is pretty compelling. Here he's just a spoiled brat who wants to be a hero for attention. They had blueprints for a pretty solid show and just didn't use it. And I don't think that it needs to be 100% accurate to the comics. They can be free to take liberties. I mean, they took liberties with Thanos, completely changing his motivation for the snap. And I'd argue it made the character more compelling and interesting, since his original motivation was just trying to impress a girl he liked, which happened to be death. So the MCU is totally free to take liberties, just try to keep the spirit of the comics, instead of making these characters and stories flat, boring, and stereotypical. I stand by everything I said in my original videos on this show. They wanted a show with a certain vibe and the comics didn't fit that. Just own it, instead of insisting it's totally comics accurate just because it makes references to the comics. But that's just my opinion, what do you guys think? I'm sure everyone's sick of me talking about She-Hulk, it's just that I've been waiting for years for this character to show up in the MCU, only to be pretty let down when she did. There are rumors that this show probably won't get a second season, and I'm not surprised, but it's sad that there are a lot of people who never read the comics and are never going to read the comics, and this is the only impression of She-Hulk they have, but that's not gonna stop them from saying the show is totally comics accurate because Dan Slott said so. Anyway, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. But before I go, I want to give a shout out to our channel's members, Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Adam K, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Man, Sir General General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Sandy Martin, Verdant Range, Butcher7 Actual, JVR, Hussieman42, Nixel, Eric Griffin, Bill C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Bandito Bane, Dakari the Professor, Equestron, Owen Wildish, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia, XV Legend, Hunter Rose, and Lil. Thank you all so much for your support, and if you'd like to support the channel as a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this content, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, and that part's free. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.